Hi, my name is Joel Solomon. I'm a prosperity coach, and my mission is to help at least 100,000 people become financially free. So welcome to part two, chapter six of the nine money rules millionaires use. This is the last chapter in the book. And this actually goes again to rule number eight, which is DIY, do it yourself. So real estate can make you rich. And just like any other investment, real estate can make you rich. Do you believe? I start the chapter by talking about your belief levels because this is how I started the book. And if you believe that you can become rich, if you're on a scale of one to 10, where one is massive doubt and 10 is absolute faith and knowing that real estate's the way to make you rich, and you're an eight, nine or 10, then go for it. But if your belief level is one, massive doubt, like a friend of mine said, well, hasn't real estate declined since the financial crisis? And what if you rent out a place and you have to become a landlord and then the people don't pay? So if you have fear and worry and you're thinking about all the negatives and you're way down at one, two or three, then don't invest in real estate and skip the chapter but you may have some strong beliefs. You've made money in real estate in the past. You believe that your tenants are good people and gonna pay their rent every month. You believe that your vacancy rates will be zero and you have a strong conviction that this is the way to do it. Then continue watching and you would read this chapter, chapter six. So first of all, we have to have some criteria to invest in real estate, just like we did when you watched my video on my proprietary stock screen. So a similar analysis can be done for real estate that was done for stocks. If you remember, PE or price to earnings is the stock's value divided by its earnings. And in real estate, there's a very similar term, term called the capitalization rate or cap rate. And this is just the inverse of the PE for a stock. You flip the P and E over, so you get E over P, or earnings, divided by price. So it's the ratio of the net operating income of the structure compared to the price of the cost of buying that structure. So for example, in stocks, a P of less than 10 is usually considered cheap. For real estate, a P of 10 would translate into a 10% cap rate, one over 10.1 or 10%. So a PE lower than 10, say nine, would translate into an 11% cap rate, one over nine or 0.11 or 11.11%. .11%. So thus the higher the cap rate, the cheaper the structure. It's interesting to note that P in stocks is the current market value of the company. For real estate, the price of the structure is truly unknown until it's bought or sold. And many investors will use the cost of the property. But what if the property is not transacted for many years? You'll have to come up with a peer group of properties close enough to get an indication of what the price of that property could be. So let's think about my parents' house in Massapequa, Long Island. They bought it in 1967, over 50 years ago, for $26,000. That's their initial cost. Now, even if you add all the improvements they've made over the last 50 years, it only comes to 56,000. This new amount is sometimes called the after repair value if the property is distressed or ARV. Now let's continue with our example. Suppose the all in cost is indeed 56,000. There haven't been any transactions on the property since 1967. Suppose they wanna rent out the house. It is five bedrooms, three baths. The going rate in the area to rent out the house would be 3,500 a month or 42,000 a year. That's their gross income. Now assume there's a normal average vacancy rate, insurance, utilities, normal repairs, maintenance. Their net operating income would be $30,000. The cost would be 56, so the cap rate is 53.6%, 30 divided by 56,000. Of course, this doesn't make a lot of sense. The price of today would be a much, much higher than 56,000. So let's look at the peer group. There are many houses 
in the area in Massapequa, I found a few that are similar and their average price is 700,000. So if we use the round number 700,000, the cap rate is 4.3%. Anyone buying the house for 700,000, assuming they earn 30,000 in rental income, would not be getting a great deal. 4.3 is much lower than the 10% uh, that I talked about earlier as being rich or cheap. So a cap rate below 10% is generally considered expensive. But you know that I'm not a rules person. So this is not true all the time. There are times when a cap rate of even 6% might be a great investment and a property with a cap rate of 12% might be a terrible investment. For example, suppose the economic area is about to be start booming like San Antonio a few years ago. The cap rates might have been 6%, somewhat expensive, but if you knew the house you purchased was going to appreciate 10% a year over five years because of an economic boom, would this be a great investment? Of course. Similarly, you might invest in a property that has a cap rate of 12%. Looks cheap. Suppose you didn't take into account some one-time expenses, some one-time repairs and maintenance costs. Alternatively, suppose the economy was about to collapse. Say you invested in Detroit in 2006 with a cap rate of 12%. The investment looks cheap, but the ability to sell the property over the next five years was pretty low and house prices went down substantially. Now let's back up a bit. What characterizes a great deal? First of all, for those of you who are believers, it's actually quite simple. You only have to be good at three things. Finding cheap structures, finding cheap financing, and selling the property at the right price. So here are some simple suggestions, these are not rules, for people to just start out in real estate. Again, if you're an expert in real estate, okay, you probably can skip this part. But let's talk about a few rules. Three, start with properties within a small distance from your home. So you have an apartment or you have a house, start with maybe 25 miles within your area. Some may say to go to 50, but I'll say start with 25. Start with an area you're pretty familiar with. If there's enough properties with a 10 mile radiance, start there. And then become an expert in an even smaller radius. It could be an area around your home, say even just a mile or two. It could be a neighboring town or a completely different area that you believe has excellent price appreciation. I was recently talking with somebody who lived in Manhattan who was talking about Cleveland, Ohio as a great area to invest. And then step three, find sellers who are interested in selling. Motivated sellers are the ones where you'll find properties that are cheap. So that's my simple process for investing in real estate. Three steps, find cheap structures, find cheap financing, and find properties that are selling at the right time by motivated sellers close to your property that you live in already and you will make money in real estate. So thanks for watching. I believe in you.